can we start designing? No, you cannot. You need to see that is the load distribution is happening properly. So we arrange this configuration. Okay, this is the most simple configuration. Almost all the small aircrafts have this configuration currently, at least in the aviation. Shear, bending, and bending attachment. Okay, even though we know that the load, if this portion is little higher, either you see this pattern or you see this pattern, we know that the load is bit, but because of the CP of this and your load distribution will be expecting on it, more load will be received by middle and the rate settings. If you feel that these two are, and if you feel that this contribution is not much, see that can change configuration from here to here so that. More Z load you will expect to fall on this also. So some of the Z load you are trying to shift from here to here. Again, what is the result you will be getting? So like this, you need to check for all the permutations and combinations where you are meant to get it. Why we will have no problem because compared to the Z load, you will see why is very less because six lakh is the total load you applied on this. All six lakhs need to be reacted here. How many lakhs you have to take a Y load? One, three, four. Maximum it can experience 1.5 lakhs in each one. That's only why you have. But the one into the Z distance, which is going to come, call the MX, which will be induced out of it, will be very huge. And that you need to see that how are you able to manage it. With equally, it can be distributed in the configuration what will be decided. That only we can witness it based on the reaction for sort of fitting, which you need to come out later. So, what is that we will witness? This portion is called adjust the level. So you need to be careful when you are explaining. We will be first, this profile is most important for us. This is called leg. And the, the way we are coming up with an interface to attach this with an adjacent assembly, then this becomes fitting. Okay, we are not getting into the fitting design part now. We will be just doing the profile. And this leg when it comes, even if you take half of this fitting. So this is the leg. Typically, in reality, the leg should be like this. So this lug I am going to take how much is the EV, how much is the EV, I am going to cut this design. We will be finding out four critical dimensions width of this lug, ED of the lug, diameter of the hole, thickness of the hole. Okay, so that is what we will be demonstrating. And the outcome of this bending fitting will be how many number of fasteners are required here, where is it you have a plan to connect, where what configuration, that's a different bargain, which only will be discussed during the design phase. So we are in almost the configuration phase. The number one phase we are concept to be like this out of five phases what we see normally in the design of aircraft. I often ask a question. You need to ask a question to yourself without a fail that probably even though if I give this drawing to you, you are able to create a model. If I give a model to you, you are able to create the drawing. Three questions what you need to ask is how do I do a drafting? How much time I would need? How do I can do a modeling of this pertaining to particular software? How much time I would need? You should not be completing without asking question to yourself that how do I design this? What inputs I need? What knowledge do I need? Every component and assembly. So there is nothing where you can design the assembly. You are going to design the components and the components when they are assembled only it becomes sub-assembly. Group of sub-assemblies will become an assembly. We are not going to design an assembly. We will be see, we have simulated, we have put all the global model now. We are going to extract the reaction forces. We come back to the component design. Every component we are going to design, now we will be dealing with the fittings. Tomorrow we will be dealing with this panel. This panel is a combination of skin stranger panel. Rectangular panel subjected to combined loading with the stringers. Then I go to this particular piece, which is a rib, okay, which I know that it's been critical due to shear. I want to design again a shear. Then you are going to again the sparse. Sparse will be a longitudinal continuous member which will take the bending. We are not designing the assembly, we are designing the components, verifying it independently. After the design is safe, then we are going to back to the constructing the subassembly or the assembly. So you need to be very careful. Every component is a different, different component. But still, only we deal with three fours and three moments and five stresses. Engineering is just three fours, three moments, five stresses. Same thing. So what is this you need to do? The life cycle, if you see, you need to, to design this particular like, particularly. Like, there are 
this leg is expected to subject it for a three loops, one is we say it's an axial load transverse load, normal load. We need to make sure that this leg is going to experience the very least load in this direction, otherwise your structure, the small amount of load will make your structure to bend like this. You should never allow this design of the leg is driven by this load, transverse load. It should be always by this load. Okay, that is what we are going to uh, demonstrate here that leg will be. So when we say that this component, this component together we call it as a shear load, but we don't use a word for shear here. The word is called is oblique loading, but calculation is very same, square root of f by square root z square. Okay, but if you see this predominantly the leg is given by this criteria, the failure of this criteria is very very critical. That is what we are going to see here that the leg is going to we need to design the leg for three loads, one for axial loading, one for transverse loading, one is combined loading, which is called oblique loading, which is a resultant of both in plane edge. How the leg is going to fail when it is being subjected to axial loading is out of these three loads. This is where the very vital question which is expected to come in in terms certainly is can you please let me know if you say that because you will be answering that leg will be critical to this load it's an axial load may know that for this load how the leg is expected to feel it's an anticipation we are anticipating okay if you apply more load in this direction this is expected to feel like this one is the tension here this is the shear and this is the blade we are going to talk about this. It is a tension arrow, shear arrow, and the bearing arrow. These three are the failures when the leg is going to experience when it is being subjected to axial loading. Okay. When you finish that part, leg is being okay. How it's going to fail while it's being subjected to transverse loading is it's a combination, it's a loading very combination. What they are showing this area, this is the area going to resisting when you try to when this leg is experiencing a load, what area is going to resist that area only we need to compute in all the three cases here. Will there be any change in the load? We are supposed to consider, we cannot ignore it. Similarly, you will have another load which is in this direction. What is the area which will be resisting when it this fails? That is this complete area. That area is this what are we concerned? This is the area which will be resisting when the leg is subjected to this loading, transverse loading what we see. This area computation we are going to get to, we have a formula which is basically an empirical formula which is now a straight formula. That is a failure of due to transverse loading. Then you will have a failure due to oblique loading. This is the out of plane loading, but combination of x and y very similarly if in our beam problem what we discussed in the beginning is if the Shear force and the bending moment act together actually. Basically, they simultaneously act together. We need to check for a combined failure. Here, axial loading, transverse loading, when they, they will be acting simultaneously, what is going to happen is oblique loading, we need to again check for it. Which we are going to result factor of a transverse load, then we will compute the result factor due to oblique loading. Procedure is same whether you use for this leg or whether you use for this leg procedure is saying when it comes to the design of this leg, what we do is we are going to cut this. How much is the ED? Take the ED here, make a cut here, then it becomes a single piece. That single piece also we are going to design like this only. But the part is one load will be subjected, okay? And we will take whichever is having a tension. If you see, this is a compression, absolutely this good. I love it because there is so much of material here, we have no problem. But here you will have only so much of material, and this is the leg thickness. How much we need to leave a material here, which we are going to investigate. So this load out of this, whichever is tension, we take it. Assume that my compression is higher than my tension. This is my compression. This is my leg where it is experiencing tension load. Okay, but in magnitude wise, assume that this is maybe a 500 kilonewton. And this is 480 kilonewton. What are we going to do? We 
which you know you are going to consider consider that magnitude for design so we will be assuming that 500 kilo newton is the positive load which you will be considering for the design because this is a primary structural component class 1 component the failure of this will lead to a catastrophic failure hence we should not take any chances here okay we are in our BP assembly now now we have applied the load on the LX scheme correct we have applied the LS skin. When it's been LS skin, it's been applied. One will be subjected to compression, another will be subjected to tension. Okay. There will be a load case which the load may act on these two. Then this loading, whatever you are going to see in the reverse. So 500 will become other. So considering that, I am going to. So you need to put a disclaimer there saying that no, considering this is a reversible load case, I am using the 500 as a critical load case for this. Hence, I am considering 500 kilo newton for the design of the blood. So that is the basic assumption we need with and we proceed further. Okay. And this to the skin also like this. So that part you need to come up with a basic design. Okay, you will have a flange which will be connected to the skin and you will how to analyze this and initially you didn't have this so now you are making a provision to connect to this part. This is the details which you are going to study in the detailed design part. What we are going to do in the Conceptual design phase, we are just interested in what is the basic configuration of blood. The blood profile is very important. This can always undergo changes because of the preliminary design and the detailed design, loads normally are expected to increase a bit. Okay? What is the MLA procedure? The design of the leg procedure, no? the component design life cycle of the leg. Extraction of critical forces. You have done the global modeling now. We don't know the reaction forces. We do not know the reaction forces that, okay, how much this is experiencing, how much these are experiencing. So far, we have not yet studied, but we have made a preliminary analysis and we kept the results. So that's where we need to. This is a sample video of our class. We have a unique methodology of teaching. We coach students and professionals in core engineering domain. We have highly experienced team working to provide industry exposure and hands-on experience as per global industry standards to make students and professionals employable for a longer term in in sutry. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested to know more, you can get in touch with us. Do subscribe to our channel for more such videos.